Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and continuing off on our prediction shooter tutorial, last time I did mention that we would be going more into the visuals of shooting, but I actually don't think that's quite right. I think we should work on finishing up the, the gameplay loop so that we can get, you know, all the way around from spawning, shooting, killing, and restarting the game. And so for that, we're going to be using the predicted state machine. So I'm just going to call this the state machine, and in there we're going to put the predicted state machine. Right, and so now we need to make some states. First of all, we need to handle the player spawning. And then I think we should have some kind of warm-up state, you know, where we're essentially waiting for all players to be there. Um, and then I think we should have a game running state, essentially, and then a round-ended state or something like that. So I think let's move into our script here and into my shooter folder. And I'm just going to make a new folder that I'm going to call game states. And so in here, I'll be making the, let's say, the wait for player state. Well, we're essentially just waiting for the right amount of people to be connected in order to continue and, you know, actually run the whole gameplay loop. So let me make a serialized field, private int, and then let's do expected players. And also, first of all, actually, this needs to be inherited from predicted state node. And in here, we need to now give it a state. So let me make a public struct. Let's just call it the waste state. And this is of the type I predicted data, of course, of type wait state. And of course, as always, we have the dispose in here. Cool. So now I'm going to plop that in there. And that's, of course, the wait for player state dot wait state. And there we are. So now we have the predicted state node set up. And now we have a state simulate, which is what I think we should be using. And so essentially during the simulation, while it's running, while the state is active, state simulate will be called. Um, and essentially what we want to do in here is we just want to wait till all the players are essentially connected. And so one of the easiest ways to do that is in the prediction manager, dot players we have the we can grab the current state and then we can get the handle players and this is essentially uh, how we know the players that are part of the prediction loop right now and so all we need to do is just take this check if the handle players dot count is greater than or equal to the expected players then we can just continue so we can just do machine dot next and that's it. That should pretty much be all of this. And mind you that I'm, of course, programming all of this on the fly as well. I haven't planned this out. Uh, so, you know, I might be missing something as well. Now, I do actually like making a game object for each of these. It just makes it a little easier to organize as our states grow. But it's really up to you how you want to do that. I'm going to drag and drop the state in there and say right now we're waiting for one player, for example. And now let me just make the next state. Um, so let me just make the player spawning state, for example. And similar to this here, I'm just going to copy all of this actually and just paste it in here. Of course, we can change the state name and so on. Um, but really, I just wanted it to be sped up a bit. So spawn state. And this is now called spawn state everywhere. And there it goes. Now we have the player spawning state here. And we can just remove this. We don't actually need the state simulate either. Um, right now, we just have sort of an empty game state just because I wanted to show you that we'll move straight into this state. So let's just call this one spawning state. I'll drag and drop that there. And then we'll put that into the state machine. So spawning state. So you can see right now, if we say here, we'll, for example, be waiting for two players. When I hit play, we look at the state machine. You can see that we are in the current state of wait for player state. But now, actually, I think I can do this at runtime. Now, if I go and make this one and we look here, now you can see we're in the player spawning state. So now we actually moved on because now there is one player. Cool. So now let's handle the actual spawning of the player, which also means the predicted player spawner we can pretty much get rid of. But let's go and make the state first, shall we? And actually, one thing I do want to do is I want to teach you guys that it's not dangerous looking in Pernet's code, right? So you can see in here, for example, our player prefab is just a game object. So we can just copy that into our state here. And you can see we also just have a list of spawn points. So we can just plop that in here as well. And then we have an int for our current spawn point. So I'm just going to plop that in here too. And then let's have a look at how it handles the actual spawning. So we can see on the player loading of the scene, it essentially handles all the spawning here, sets the ownership and so on. Cool. So now what we can do is I can just try and copy this and go into our spawning state. And then here we need to figure out where we actually do it. Now I want to do it in what's called the enter method, which is just like that. So it's an enter override that we have. I'm going to plug and play all of this in here. And I'm not going to keep track of that. And also you can see on player scene loaded, we have the player here. But more importantly, we want to iterate through the players, obviously. So that means the player that we have here, we're just iterating through. And what we're iterating through is actually exactly what we have here. That's the handle players. So let me just go and make a for each loop. We iterate through the players. I call it a player. And then you can always also just 
alt enter and make it into a for loop just if you care a little bit about more performance but it's really minuscule at this point so now we go in here and all of a sudden you can see that now we have the exact same spawning code as per net on spawning code right so it checks that we have the spawn points if not it just creates them somewhere and then it checks if our player is valid and then it plops them in here and we can actually put this one into the for each loop as well or for loop sorry and that should mostly do it so let's try and have a look and see if this now works so now let's delete the player spawner from here and let me go into the spawning state and let's find the player prefab first of all so he's there and then for spawn points i have them all right here so i'm just gonna log it grab all the spawn points and there we go so now let me try and hit play nothing will happen because this is set to two and then when i set this to one and boom there we go now our player spawned now we have a spawning state that also successfully works and as you can see it's almost painfully easy when you just dare look at Pernet's code it's really not that scary all you can see is just when the scene's loaded it just does the spawning and i literally just copied the functionality of Pernet's code and this is really a big part of what i think makes Pernet really strong is that we try and take a no cheating approach now obviously a spawner is a symbol thing a lot of networking systems have good player spawners so don't get me wrong uh, but just in the sense that you know it's not scary looking at our code our code is just similar to the code that you'll be writing or should be writing so now we can close the player spawn again and now we have a spawning state that we can be happy with cool so now let's just quickly make like a round running state something like that so let me go in here let's call it round running state and of course we make this a predicted state node as well and we need to give it a state so i'm just gonna do the same thing to a public i actually can copy the state from the others here like so and this will just be a round state something like that and here we go now we have that set up and now let's try and think about what it is exactly that we need to do here um so the reason for the round running state is going to be to figure out when do we end the game so let's also for that sake just make a round ended state just because now we have sort of an empty template here so let me just do this round ended open that up and then our round running state i am just gonna copy this put it in here and of course this is that this is a predicted state note and this is let's just call round end state like so and there we go so now we have this set up um and yeah, going back into our round running state, we need to figure out exactly how do we want to track the players alive, for example. So one of the ways that we could do this is we could have the player spawning state, for example, tell the round running state that here a player has been spawned. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad way to go about it. And actually, I think for now, that's probably the simplest approach. Um, so let's actually go ahead and do that. So inside our state, I want to make a public disposable dictionary. And this is going to be of player ID to the identity ID. So when you spawn something and you do dot create, you get this predicted object ID. And in my case, that's exactly what we want to store in here. So we're going to store the predicted object ID. That's essentially the reference to our object. And this list is going to be players alive. Oh, sorry. And we don't make a new, of course. And then inside of dispose, we just have to do dot dispose after it. So what we can do here is I can make a public void. And then this is going to be called on player spawned. And what we essentially want is we want these two, right? So we want the player ID of the player. And then we want the predicted object ID for the, I guess, the object. I'm just going to call it OBJ. And then we want to go into our current state, dot players alive, dot add. Or actually, we can just do to the player equals to OBJ. That should essentially do it. And also, just for good measure, let's do get initial state. And then inside the get initial state, we want to return a new round state that we want to make sure that we've populated the players alive list. So players alive equals to disposable dictionary dot create. And this, of course, needs to be of the right type. So we can just copy the types down here and then we create the dictionary just like that. And that's it. Now that's set up and the players are getting populated. So now this should be getting populated. And also inside the round state, I'm just going to make a two string. And the reason for that is that we can more easily debug it, right? So in my case, for example, uh, let's make a new string. So this is the string of the log. That'll just be an empty string. And I guess here for my sake, let's make it something. So this is going to be players alive. Oh, whoops, not like that. Players alive. And then here we will just do players alive dot count. And then what we can do is we can for each through the players alive values and lock them out here. So we want to make a new line and then we essentially want to add a player to each line. 
And let's also add a little bit of an indentation. So let's just do like three spaces or something like that. And then in the end, we can return the log. Now, the reason why I do this, and this will be quite clear in a second. So in the spawning state, when we enter the state, we spawn for every player. And then down here for every player, when we do it, so let's set a reference to the round running state. And then here, after we do that, we want to set the round running state on player spawned. And then we want to call it for the player to the new player as well, that value, like so. Now going out here, let's set up these this round running state. And so let's do round running state and the round ended state and just set those up round running and then the spawning state needs the round running one here uh, and then of course i forgot in our log out here and i just quickly modified the log here because i forgot some things first of all we need to check that the players alive is not disposed the reason for this is before the game is actually starting or anything like that it will just be disposed it won't exist because we firstly created it up here and also secondly it's obviously the keys that i want to log out so i'm not logging out the values i'm logging out the player keys instead uh, and after just doing that little thing, now it actually works. Now you can see here when it is disposed, I'm just logging out that it is not running. And then when I do hit play, you can see I'm not spawned yet. So right now it says players live zero. And then when I go and hit one, I can see it says players live one, and that's 001 that's alive. Cool. So that seems to work very well. Um, and now what we need to do is we need the players to be unsubscribed from in here, or essentially removed from the dictionary, right? Upon dying. And I think what we have here is already a really good base setup. So I think in the next video, we'll get into actually removing them from that list, moving into the round ended state and essentially restarting the whole game. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.